Since its inception, Numenera introduced a number of unique philosophical and mechanical concepts to tabletop role-playing games, concepts which continue to be developed as MCG refines and expands the cipher system. In this video, I'm going to talk about GM and player intrusions and how you should think about approaching them. This video would not be possible without the input of my followers on Twitter who let me know what topic they'd like me to cover in a bonus video, as well as a special guest I got to interview to chat about some perspectives on intrusions. Stick around until the end of this video if you want some personal examples of intrusions I've had happen in my home games as an example, and a thank you to my players for giving me permission to talk about our games publicly, if for just a little bit to illustrate these mechanics. GM intrusions and their cousin player intrusions are somewhat of a balance between a distinct mechanical way of structuring and distributing a means of character advancement, that being XP, while also supporting some of the philosophical perspectives of the cipher system where it concerns narrative and player agency. For some, the concept of the GM creating a twist or complication in the story and issuing XP to mechanically ground the change is rather new. It may feel redundant as many GMs are already used to adjusting the narrative or situation in the moment while others aren't always sure where the line is or what they can or should do with the mechanic. The basics of the GM intrusion are quite simple. The GM announces that something in the world changes or offers the players the opportunity to have the situation change and issues XP to the players if they accept. Player intrusions are the same, but in reverse, and perhaps slightly smaller in scope than what the GM can do. A player spends a point of XP and states that the narrative changes in some distinct and interesting way. If this sounds vague, don't worry, as it's a reflection of the flexibility of this mechanic, and you as the GM or player can make use of it in any number of interesting ways. One of the most important aspects of understanding the intrusion mechanic, however, is how it keys into Numenera and the Cypher system's philosophy on XP. In many ways, we have been trained to understand experience points as an abstraction of the amount of experience a character has earned. This isn't necessarily wrong, but it has been particularly exaggerated in the age of computer role-playing games, which have trained us to think of experience points as strictly serving the role of filling up a progress bar. Again, there are some ways in which this is appropriate, but in order for us to make the most out of the intrusion mechanic in the cipher system, I think we need to tweak our understanding of what we mean when we say experience points. Instead of the experience referring to the experience your character has earned, it may be better to think of the term experience point as being a point earned for having an experience. The point your character earns in a GM intrusion is a reward mechanism for them having gone through an experience initiated by the GM. In the reverse, a player intrusion involves the expenditure of a point to trigger an experience. As the points spent by a character's might pool are an abstraction of the physical strength and constitution of a character, so too are the experience points an abstraction of the narrative experiences contained within the game. In fact, I'd suggest that players think of their experience points as kind of a fourth stat pool among might, speed, and intellect. Might abstracts your character's physical reality, speed abstracts your character's dexterity and overall sense of quickness and reaction time, and intellect abstracts your character's mental acuity. Experience points abstract your character's role in the narrative. Your pool of experience points represent your capacity as the player to influence the narrative of the game, and one of those options is character advancement. As is indicated by page 125 of Numenera Discovery, however, there are many other options for players to spend these points to essentially change the world around them and their relationship to it, to change the nature of the experiences they will have as characters and players. The difference, of course, between your experience pool point and your stat pools is that experience is only received through narrative development, discovering things in the game, and receiving receiving GM intrusions. The GM crafts or spontaneously introduces an interesting and unexpected twist or development, an experience, in the game around one to four times in a single session, and players may earn a point for having gone through the experience this intrusion creates. That point then allows them to take agency over the greater experience by either advancing their character or making changes to the world around them either through their own intrusions or through medium and long-term benefits that flesh out the story in a structured way. Here's one of the largest secrets about intrusions, however. The mechanic exists for you as a GM or player 
to interpret and decide its best uses, and over time you'll find ways of using it in a way that speaks to your style as a GM or player. Many GMs who run Numenera and Cypher system games often come up with their own unique approaches. The intrusions aren't a big red button you push to dole out or spend XP, instead they're a narrative and mechanical technique or instrument that will help you achieve the kinds of experiences you want to have in your game. And I do mean that directly, the experiences that you individually want to craft in your game. Because of this, I wanted to get the perspective of another GM on the intrusion mechanic. Lucas Santana, producer at Rule of Lore and game master for the Cypher System actual play series Infinite Horizon, recently shared some of his thoughts with me on using intrusions, shining some light at first on his approach, not merely of introducing intrusions directly or forcefully, but instead offering it to players as an option in the moment. <laughs> um, I am going to, uh, to offer you a GM intrusion. Yes. Oh, damn it. Uh, no. <sighs> Wait, you don't have any XP, so. I don't have an XP. Uh, okay, Unless you I'll don't take... want to set one of us. Uh, yeah, I, I you could. If you don't want it. That's only if you don't want it. Yeah, up to you. But. I don't want to break my streak of always taking it. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll so take go ahead it. and uh, give yourself one XP and uh, give the other to somebody else. I want to give it to Mason because okay. I don't know if I just got your friend killed. <laughs> Here's the next mm. piece to make up for it, I guess. Okay. No, no. Um, <laughs> so, a guilt, a guilt XP? So, don't Inspired by the approach taken on Geek and Sundry's Callisto 6 actual play, Lucas uses this mechanic to interact with his players through the narrative. I'm always a fan of any uh, game mechanic that emphasizes or prioritizes player agency. And so having an opportunity where I can say to the players, listen, here's a chance for you to make your life a little bit more difficult, but also more interesting. Uh, and then give them the opportunity to take it and just sort of uh, kind of enhance whatever narrative moment is taking place. Have that sort of, that moment that happens in every movie and TV show where it's like they're feet from the finish line and then something goes wrong, right? Like that's, that's always a prime opportunity for drama. Um, and while I hate it in movies and TV shows, it's great. It's so much. It's always so much fun in a TTRPG. It, it's it's sort of the great equalizer, I think, because as a GM, you have so much power over everything that happens. You can just make something happen, and it might not be something that the players enjoy. But at least I feel like when the players have some say in it, when they when they choose it for themselves, they decide that they want to lean a little bit into the chaos of things. Then it feels like you're a lot less likely to tilt into that territory of. Uh, of GM overstepping. Mm. And so it just, I, to me, I really like doing it that way because it does really feel like uh, like kind of an equalizer, you know, between the, the GM and the players. And I, I'm always a fan of that. As I said earlier, experience points in the Cypher system should emphasize the fact that the points emerge from an experience the character has. What's great about seeing this at work on Infinite Horizon is that Lucas offers the players a chance to increase the complexity of the experience they're having, and if they take it, they earn a point and the narrative develops in a way that can't just be dictated by raw numbers and challenge ratings. In fact, it creates challenges and story developments that can't always be reduced down to a level of difficulty and target number. Because of the way Cypher works, uh, mechanically, the, the, the challenge can't always hinge on the difficulty of the task because players will find a way. They always bringing do. that. They'll find a way. <laughs> they always do. They will find a way of bringing that number down to the point where it, it becomes where really, really things that are supposed to be very difficult become almost trivial. And if you're hinging everything uh, uh, like challenge wise on that difficulty number, then you're probably going to end up being pretty frustrated as a GM because you're just at a certain point, you're just not going to be able to challenge your players without being somewhat vindictive about it. Um, and so intrusions are great because a player can succeed a on a task and you can be like, okay, great. You succeeded. However, <laughs> <laughs> GM intrusion. So that way it keeps a balance between the players feeling like they are capable and accomplishing things, but also doesn't just make everything a cakewalk where things will become a little, they, they 
things like that if it, if it's if there's no challenge at all if there's no stakes then things get stagnant players lose interest it just not that interesting for anybody while most mechanics for a character are always understood as an abstraction of what the character could do in the game lucas also describes the intrusion mechanic as offering the player an opportunity to control more of the game it gives me an in-game way without stepping out without having to step out and say is this okay right it gives me an in-game method to float something potentially to my players and then allow them to do that thing that is very important in games, which is consent. Um, yes. It allows them to consent or not. And then if they and if they don't, then there is a cost, but that it's a cost that XP comes and goes like in, right. in, in, in Cypher. It's not a thing where it's like, oh, you're spending this valuable resource that you want to hoard, right? XP comes and goes. It's meant to be you're meant to be generous with xp and so i i really like that idea of it so for me i think it is both a tool in the sense that it is a narrative tool that i use to sort of shape the the story a little bit to give a little bit of heightened stakes a little bit of extra drama and and tension but it's also core in the sense that it serves my personal aim which is to ensure a safe and enjoyable Right. Uh, experience for my players. We often talk about RPGs being a collaborative experience, and what Lucas is getting at is the ability for the players and GM to collaboratively influence and play with the narrative, with a bit more structure and control than just straight improv. The distribution of XP serves to plant a bit of structure and control over the narrative, which is important as this is one of the primary ways XP moves around in Numenera and Cypher system games. It allows everyone at the table to shape and mold the story in different ways that go beyond just making dice rolls at difficulty challenges. But what if the actual narrative change or twist itself? It's one thing to outline what this mechanic does and to describe how it ties into narrative development and character growth, but what about the actual events? Lucas described to me how he often uses GM intrusions to course correct in response to unique and unexpected decisions the players make, as well as making use of the GM intrusion card deck for Numenera to come up with spontaneous and chaotic developments that no one could predict. Kind of works the other way, right? It's course correct for, for players, but it's also kind of course correct for the GM too, I think. It works really well because there are some times when I'll like, I'll have something planned and when I'm approaching that moment in game, like in theory, when I was planning it, it seemed like a really good idea. But when I get there, I'm like, ooh, is this too mean? Can I, is this, <laughs> this feels maybe like it wouldn't feel that good to them. And that's when like, I'm like, okay, well I was planning on having this happen anyway, but I'm gonna make, I'm gonna offer an intrusion here. What I really like about this perspective is that it frames the intrusion as a way for the GM to make use of the narrative and story that they've previously developed or thought of and either center it or radically adapt it based on decisions that the players make in the moment. Many GMs have had the experience of designing an intricate encounter, situation, or story hook only for it to not take center stage during an actual game. The intrusion, as Lucas very much demonstrates, allows a GM to take stock of what the players are doing in the narrative and either recenter or refocus a narrative plot point, or adjust a previous plan to make the most out of what players are spontaneously doing while the game is being played. This means that through an intrusion, the game is less likely to feel like it's going off script than it is actively making changes to a script and framing it narratively. It means that the story and narrative weight doesn't end when a GM finishes typing up their synopsis for an adventure or outlining a series of possible outcomes, but instead it offers a mechanic where forgotten narrative points can be re-centered or the narrative developments can be shifted shifted to encompass or center player behavior. One of the most valuable reflections on the GM intrusion mechanic I got from speaking with Lucas is the reality that using the mechanic takes a bit of practice, one that you'll continue to get a feel for the more you play. It's, I mean, I think it's like learning anything. It's something that requires practice. And so I think the the easiest way for me to in, to start incorporating, when I, when I started incorporating uh, intrusions when I was learning is to think of basically like I mentioned before, right? Those moments where the players just zoom through something that I thought was gonna be a bit of a challenge for them. And in that moment, instead of channeling that moment of being taken aback by how quickly they got through and easily they got through something, my, I, I've basically slowly over time 
taken that as, as an indicator, as a signal, like, ah, this would be a good opportunity for a GM intrusion, right? And, and the more you do that, I think the more it becomes just part of your mentality when you're running the game. So I would say any moment when uh, when you're feeling like the players aren't being challenged enough is probably a good moment to consider tossing a GM intrusion in there. Essentially, if you're worried you're not using the mechanic correctly, that's okay. You should continue to find ways to experiment with this mechanic to find the right balance for you and your group and the story you're telling. The cipher system is not a rigid set of hard rules and numbers to dictate outcomes, but is instead a series of suggestions and mechanics to scaffold out a narrative as it goes along, codifying experiences by the distribution of XP and building the narrative in a cohesive manner. How you organize that and how you wield these mechanics will largely depend on the personalities of you and your players, who your characters are, and what the tone of the game, adventure, or session is. It's something you can adjust and tweak, and there aren't many wrong ways to go about it. On the opposite side of the fence are player intrusions, in which players have the ability to mold the narrative. Like the GM intrusion, there are a number of ways this can manifest in a game. Speaking on this mechanic, Lucas explained that while it doesn't get a tremendous amount of use on Infinite Horizon, it does allow a player to bend existing mechanics in ways that aren't immediately suggested or implied by the rules. More often than not, I mean, I think what is effectively a player intrusion is where a player will say that they want to do something, mm -hmm. and if I can't, it'll be a little bit outside of the realm of what their actual abilities could do or what I see as feasible for them to be able to accomplish more often than not in that instance, which I guess is it's effectively a player intrusion, but not player initiated, where I'll just sure. say, you know what, I'll tell you what, spend an XP. Player intrusions in this light allow players to think beyond the script of the rules and their designated abilities, and instead let them to think in a more freestyle way. Players can just think from the perspective of their characters and what is narratively interesting and not necessarily worry about what the rules say they can or cannot do. They're spending a point of XP, so it isn't a free-for-all and there is a cost, but they are given a window of opportunity to go beyond the script of the mechanical system. For those who are worried about this being somewhat game-breaking, I'd again suggest that intrusions are kept in check by their reliance on XP as a kind of currency. But there's also a degree of trust that players and GMs are manipulating the story in a way that changes the narrative in an interesting and entertaining way for everyone. Those who would abuse the mechanics are really no different from the kinds of players who'd want to initiate combat with every NPC in a D&D game or are constantly testing the limits of their place on an alignment grid. Intrusions work best when everyone understands that changes to the narrative make the story more engaging and dynamic for everyone. If you're already used to running games in this way, the only change you'll make is to have XP distributed when you make substantial changes to a narrative situation. If you're used to deciding everything in an RPG based on the randomized outcomes of dice and task difficulties, use intrusions to put the rules down and have a character or situation change that gets players and GMs to respond in more of a narrative mindset or even a more emotional one. It's about knowing what it is you want to happen and just saying that it happens, issuing XP or spending XP to frame it in the game's mechanics. To close out this video, I'd like to give some examples of some GM intrusions and great player intrusions that I've had recently occur in some of my games. In trying to save a city that was under siege by a mysterious threat that was transforming people into pillars of light, a player character in one of my home games guaranteed the survival of a family with a small child who was trying to flee the city. Spending a point of XP for a player intrusion, Ignacio, a heroic glaive who defends the weak, immediately knew where in the city to send the family to guarantee their safety. He swiftly hid them in a restaurant he said his character had frequented in the past, allowing the party to travel further into the city to face the apparent source of the threat. This actively fed into Ignacio's character concept. For the family he saved, particularly the young child he made a connection with, part of Ignacio's legacy now as a character is as someone who saved these people. 
The player intrusion meant that we as a party simply knew that this was what was right for the story. We didn't roll perception to find the hiding spot, there were no extra checks to make sure the family was hidden. Instead, Ignacio as a character who strives to be a protector was able to be the protector. We knew as a group that this was the story we wanted to tell, and we used a mechanic in the system to allow us to make this into a story. In the same game, I used a GM intrusion to elevate a scenario where the party was traveling to face an unknown threat on a boat. Boat. As the boat traveled down a narrow river, a creature of some kind yanked Stell, a meticulous seeker who manipulates forests into the water. There were no checks to be sure that the creature could do this, and of course it was up to the player to refuse this if they wished by spending a point of XP. The narrative played out though. Stell was yanked into the water, and this prompted Ignacio to immediately jump in after him while the rest of the party searched for flotation devices and other ways they could help. It added a bit of excitement, and it was unexpected. In one of my other games, Gavin, a relentless glaive who fuses flesh and steel, found himself having to fight against a dangerous defense automaton guarding an Aeon Priest's tower. Gavin excels at physical combat, particularly unarmed combat as his arms were replaced with steel prosthetics. He knows, however, where his limits are. Since the fight was taking place in an Aeon Priest lab and hence filled with strange experiments and recovered pieces of the Numenera, Gavin's player activated a player intrusion to state that he grabbed some random device in the room, something that controlled gravity, and he used it as an improvised weapon against the automaton, one that had the power to knock the machine prone, giving the party the upper hand. Given his role as the only glaive of the party, Gavin rose to the occasion to help the group gain the upper hand on a particularly dangerous foe, and as a result, we remember this encounter not merely as the party fighting a defense automaton, but as the time when Gavin performed a heroic feat. In the same game, the party was exploring a forest, searching for a particular NPC known to frequent the area for hunting. They were told that this NPC was elusive and that he was a great tracker. As I was writing the details of what would be in the forest and what discoveries the party would come across, I had a vision of a scene where this NPC would sneak up on the party, drawing a blade to one of the characters' throats in anticipation for the worst. It was a scene I thought would frame this NPC well as a mysterious and potentially dangerous character. Instead of having the party roll perception checks versus the NPC's stealth stat, I instead issued this scene as a GM intrusion. I did leave some room in the beginning of the encounter for the party to find this person, but if they didn't find him before entering the forest, then I made a rule for myself. The NPC will sneak up on the party via a GM intrusion. The concept of this NPC I wrote up was that they were like a ghost, and I wanted there to be a scene to demonstrate this. After walking through the forest for some time, I initiated the GM intrusion and told one of my players, you hear a branch snap and there's a blade to your throat while you hear the words, Eadacy, are you a friend or foe? The interaction played out peacefully and the party ended up working with the NPC to solve the problem at hand, but I relied on the intrusion mechanic to guarantee a very theatrical entrance for the NPC and a memorable moment in the story the game is actively telling. It's difficult to come up with hard and fast rules for intrusions. As my conversation with Lucas from Infinite Horizon illustrated, these tools allow us as GMs and players to follow narrative beats and impulses that we find inspiration from in the moment or that we may find in other games, TV shows, movies, books, and so on. They're a mechanical way of structuring interesting situations for the story, with the distribution of XP allowing these developments to have numerical weight. It allows GMs and players to execute specific scenes and moments, help center narrative beats that may get lost or forgotten, and allows spontaneous decisions of the players to be framed with narrative weight. Like many rules in the Cypher system, it does take a bit of practice. You may have to play a few sessions before you can get a sense of how you can use these rules, not necessarily to the benefit of any particular character or plot point, but to the benefit of the story being created during the game. The intrusion may represent unexpected developments, a deepening of a mystery, an opportunity for a character to rise to the occasion, or for the rules in the crunch of an RPG to take a backseat for a moment to make way for players and GMs to think outside of the box for a little bit. 
thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, which was made possible by the suggestions of my followers on Twitter. I'm frequently tossing out questions and polls to answer in upcoming videos, so be sure to follow me on there to participate the next time I toss one out there. I would also like to tremendously thank Lucas Santana from Rule of Lore and Infinite Horizon for his time and contribution to this video. Please be sure to subscribe to everything Rule of Lore does. Links are in the description below. And I'd also like to thank my players for their permission to talk about some of the events in our campaigns. We're all students of the game, and each experience shows us new ways of using RPG mechanics to tell interesting stories. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to The Infinite Construct and give me a follow on Twitter.